Recently, I was replaying Need for Speed Underground, as you do, and I was reminded of another old Wild Tangent game that I haven't thought about in years. Now, I've already talked about Wild Tangent in my Blaster Ball video, but just to recap, this is the developer-publisher who's partnered with Dell and HP to have trial versions of their cheaply developed casual games come pre-installed on low-end computers. In the past year or two, they seem to have branched out into selling actual big-budget titles from developers you've probably heard of. But in 2004, they released a racing game that could best be described as a budget Need for Speed Underground clone called Final Drive Nitro. Let's take a look at it, shall we? On the main menu, we're greeted by a very shiny car showroom, with a default vehicle that I'm pretty sure was inspired by the one on the main menu of Need for Speed Underground. Taking a look at the graphics options, they're actually not terrible for a budget PC game of this era. I've certainly seen worse, though the max video resolution is only 1024x768. That's not as bad as Blaster Ball 2's fixed 800x600 resolution, but it's still not great. This game actually has decent joystick support, so controls aren't an issue. After getting all my mapping set, I decided to jump into an instant race to get a feel for the game before starting career mode. Wait, what? Oh god, what's happening? What's up with this camera, and these physics, and oh my god? Okay, so by instant race, they literally mean instant race, as in, you're dropped straight into a race with a random track and vehicle. I barely got the courtesy of a loading screen because I'm using an SSD. I click this button expecting some sort of vehicle or level select, and BAM! I'm immediately in a race with terrible game feel and one of the worst third-person cameras I've ever seen. I did adjust to it after a minute and finished the race, but this is not a good first impression. Now that was a lot to take in, so let's step back a bit. I'll go through career mode and try to break down exactly what's going on here. Which is easier said than done. This is one of those games where every problem it has is directly tied into several other problems. This script was difficult for me to write, because it's impossible to fully discuss most aspects of the gameplay or design without sidetracking to explain something else. If this video seems like it's a little all over the place, it's because Final Drive Nitro is an Ouroboros of bad game design. You actually start off the career mode with a decent amount of money, enough to buy one of the two starter vehicles and a few upgrades. Just don't make the mistake of going for cosmetic upgrades like I did. Go for performance upgrades instead. I didn't even realize performance upgrades were an option at first because of how this menu is designed. Instead of having separate menus for visual and performance upgrades like the game they're ripping off, Final Drive Nitro just has every upgrade component in a big list you have to cycle through, where you can only see one option at a time. Anyway, now that I've got my car set up, let's go start the first race. Oh man, where to even begin with this game? I guess I'll start by addressing the camera situation, because it's immediately obvious and I already mentioned it a minute ago. The chase camera in this game is bad. No two ways about it. I wasn't exaggerating earlier when I said it was one of the worst cameras I've ever seen in a game. It follows way too close behind the car, and it's the only option available besides the first person camera, which I find to be even worse. There is literally no way to see your rear tires while driving. The field of view is also kinda low, which combined with the awful camera angle, makes things look... weird. I don't really know how to describe it. Everything just seems way too shallow along the Z-axis. At times it almost feels like playing one of those old 2D driving games that uses a fake perspective effect, except everything is fully rendered in 3D. It's truly bizarre. You do eventually get used to it, but seriously, what madman saw this perspective and decided it should be in the final game? much less as the only third-person camera option. Upon starting the first race, I immediately noticed that my car was slower than all my opponents. I'm in second to last place right out of the gate, and I don't stand a chance of catching back up with how horrible my acceleration and top speed are. This is why skimping out on performance upgrades at the beginning was a mistake, because Final Drive Nitro is one of those games. You know the kind. The ones where progress is limited not by your skill, but by incremental stat increases that you have to grind endlessly for? I'll come back to this point later, but for now just keep in mind that it's essentially impossible for me to win any event without upgrades. The terrible acceleration is complemented by an abysmal handling model. Vehicles simultaneously feel too heavy and like they're skating on ice. Any sense of speed is completely non-existent, and the turning radius ranges from way too wide to a full-on power slide with no in-between. It's basically impossible to navigate narrow sections of track without hitting a wall, and you'll usually just bounce off them at a weird angle. 
but sometimes you'll get stuck in the wall and have to grind along it until you're forced back out. There is a button to reset your car, but that tends to be a last resort, because doing so wipes out what little momentum you have and all but ensures a last place finish. Even the AI isn't immune from this stuff. In fact, the only time I was able to overtake them in the early game is when they got stuck and had to reset. Of course, it wouldn't be a Need for Speed Underground clone without Nitrous Oxide, and Final Drive Nitro delivers as best it can. The Nitro effect in Need for Speed Underground hasn't aged particularly well, but it does at least convey a sense of speed. The one in this game doesn't. The blur effect used here feels less like going fast, and more like someone is smearing low-res Vaseline all over the camera for a few seconds. I'm sure part of this is caused by the weird camera angle, but this looks and feels awful. The Nitro Boost doesn't even make your opponents go noticeably faster. It really does seem like a feature they just tacked on because that's what the cool kids were doing. Now, I've been referring to Final Drive Nitro as a Need for Speed Underground clone, and while there are very good reasons for that, it would be unfair of me not to acknowledge the elements that have been lifted from other games. Mostly in the level design, which is very reminiscent of Midway's Cruisin' series. Every track in this game has a direct parallel to a level in one of the first three Cruisin' games. Except the city level. That one feels more like it was ripped straight out of San Francisco Rush 2049, which incidentally was also published by Midway. I could forgive the lack of originality if these tracks were at least well designed, but they're not. Aside from some occasionally interesting set dressing, the tracks do almost nothing unique or interesting. The best thing the level design adds in terms of gameplay is the occasional jump and these sand mounds on the desert track, which can be vaguely fun to navigate, at least when they're not fighting with the physics engine. The rest of the track design ranges from frustrating to horrifically boring. I already talked about how hard it is to avoid hitting walls, so how do you think I feel about narrow sections of track with multiple turns in quick succession? At least sections like that are in the minority. Most of the time the track is so much wider than it reasonably needs to be that the biggest challenge is to not fall asleep as you drive through the great swaths of nothing. These tracks are long too. A two lap race in this game takes about as long as four laps would in most other racers of the time. On multiple occasions I crossed the finish line expecting the race to end, only to realize that I had only driven a single lap. The desert track is the absolute worst in this regard. It's super long and the road is crazy wide, with a ton of downtime between the few sections that could generously be called set pieces. The city track is probably the best of the bunch. It's not great by any means, but it's at least visually interesting throughout and it feels like there was an attempt made at proper pacing. The other two tracks fall somewhere in between in terms of quality. And yes, you heard that right, I said the other two tracks. There are only four tracks in this entire game, in total. So now that I've explained the tracks, let's circle back and talk about progression. It's essentially impossible to win races at the start of the game due to how terrible your car is. The only hope you have of consistently winning anything is to buy performance upgrades. You earn money for placing in the top three of any event, but in the beginning you'll be hard pressed to get above fourth place. Luckily, the majority of the money you earn doesn't come from placing in events. You earn it for skilled driving in a manner very similar, but vastly inferior, to Need for Speed Underground's style point system. Most of the problem here is, once again, caused by the handling model. Whenever you perform an action that earns bonus cash, there's about a 3 second delay before it's added to your total earnings for the race. If you happen to hit a wall or another car during that 3 second window, which I should remind you is very easy to do, then whatever action you just performed will be cancelled out and the money won't be added to your total. This means that if you perform an action, like say a jump, you can have your bonus from the jump wiped out because you went into a drift afterwards, which extends the timer and makes it more difficult to steer. Though if you do manage to successfully pull off a large combo chain, you're rewarded with the only good sound effect in the game. All of this would make progression tedious enough on its own, but it's made even worse by the fact that you don't even get to keep most of the money you earn. You only get to keep a percentage of your bonus money based on your finishing position. You don't get anything for last place, so at the start of the game you'll be struggling just to keep 10 or 20 percent of your earnings. It's at this point that Final Drive Nitro starts to go from merely a subpar racing game to one of the most tedious, repetitive experiences I've ever played. You have to play through multiple, overly long races on the same four tracks just to be able to afford a single upgrade. 
and you have to do this over and over and over and over again. It feels like this game was designed around microtransactions, despite predating them by half a decade. The first series alone has 12 races in it. The later races get harder and charge an entry fee, so the best way to grind for money is just to play the first four races on repeat. I don't think words can adequately express just how repetitive this is. Also, let's talk about the upgrades you can buy, because the upgrade system in this game can be a bit strange. There's your standard speed, acceleration, and handling stats that I'm pretty sure work the same as they do in most other racing games. Then there's this style stat. It goes up when you buy cosmetic upgrades. Now, Need for Speed Underground used a style stat, but in that game, increasing your style would add a multiplier to any style points you earned, which added a mechanical incentive to buy cosmetic upgrades. In Final Drive Nitro, I'm not sure that the style stat does anything. So as far as I know, buying cosmetic upgrades is just a waste of your very limited resources. Though I do like how adding a spoiler increases both your style and handling stats. I don't think Need for Speed Underground even did that. As for the performance upgrades, they do kinda make a difference. It is actually possible to place in events once you've installed a couple of them, but it's still quite difficult due to the AI. Oh god the AI. I'm not exaggerating when I say that Final Drive Nitro has literally the worst opponent AI I've ever experienced in a racing game. Most racing games use what's known as rubber band AI, which is where the opponents speed up slightly when they're behind the player and slow down a bit when they're ahead. This helps keep the pack tight and ensures that finishes are close. In a well-made game, you won't even notice this is happening unless you look for it. In Final Drive Nitro, not only will you notice it, but I'm not even sure you could call it rubber band AI. Slingshot AI might be a more applicable term. Rival cars will bunch up into a tight pack and follow directly behind you if you're in front of them. If one of them should pass you though, there's a very brief window in which you can overtake them again. After that, there's pretty much no way to regain your position without some serious luck. This is what the map looked like for my first few races. The pack gets spread so thin that I initially thought every opponent just had a different set top speed, and the game had nothing resembling rubber banding. The way to win races is to pull out in front of everyone else right at the start of the race, and then stay there for the entire thing. Whatever position you find yourself in after about 10 seconds is the highest position you have a realistic chance of finishing the race in. This makes the game even more tedious, because you're never jostling for position or trying to outmaneuver your opponents. You're just trying to drive without slowing down too much or hitting anything, so they don't have a chance to overtake you. Even with this strategy and some upgrades, I was never able to place higher than second, due to how hard the AI cheats when it's in first place. So far, I've only talked about standard races, but there are other game modes. Unfortunately, they don't do much for the lack of variety, as everything I've set up to this point could apply to three quarters of them. There's a lap knockout mode, which is exactly like a normal race, except with the potential to be dragged out for five excruciatingly long laps. There's a time trial mode that's maybe one of the strangest I've ever seen. You're technically racing against the clock, but you still have opponents who I'm pretty sure are programmed to finish with one of the times you're trying to beat. As a result, it just feels like a normal race with fewer opponents. Finally, there's chicken. Yes, chicken. That's what this mode is actually called, and it's the most original thing in this entire game. This is another time trial mode, but this time with a twist. You have to beat the target while avoiding a series of cars driving head-on towards you around the track. It's not nearly as exciting as it might sound, though. It's usually way too easy to avoid the oncoming cars because of the overly wide tracks, so to compensate, there's a super tight time limit that can only be beaten if you pull off a near-perfect run which means just hitting a wall a few too many times can screw you out of a win. All in all, not a great selection of game modes, and combined with the limited track selection, stagnant progression, and terrible AI, Final Drive Nitro does not make for an overall good experience. <laughs> now, I played this game for about two hours straight during my first play session, and I was sick of it within 20 minutes. My sole motivation to continue playing was just to find out if the game introduced any new tracks once you reach Class B. I could have just looked in the game files, and ultimately I did, but I wanted to see if I could find out for myself. Spoiler, there are no more tracks. After a couple hours, it became apparent that I would need a lot more time due to how horribly slow progression is, so I quit the game, and when I came back the next day, all my progress was gone. My profile was still there, but none of my progress had saved and I was back at square one. 
Now, in fairness, I had looked for a way to save my game before quitting the last time, but after poking around in the menus and not finding anything, I assumed the game autosaved after every race, which isn't a totally unreasonable assumption to make. Not only did the majority of racing games from around this time have an autosave feature, but Blaster Ball 2, which was made by the same developer around the same time, autosaves progress after every level. I did eventually figure out how to save, but it's probably the least intuitive save system I've ever seen, and the game provides zero indication as to how it works. Remember how my profile was still there, just completely blank? Well, that's because every time a profile is loaded, it gets written to disk. So, the way to save your game is to back out to the main menu, then reload your career mode profile, and only then does your progress actually get saved. I don't know if there's some other way you're supposed to be able to save that I missed, but I couldn't find it and the game certainly doesn't tell you about it. Now I have to spend another couple hours grinding tedious races on the same four tracks just to get back to where I was before. And at least as of recording this, I've kinda given up on that. It takes a ridiculously long time to make any meaningful progress, and I somehow doubt that the other cars you can buy will improve the situation enough to justify the absurd time investment it takes to get there. The slow progression is such an overriding issue that I haven't even talked about more minor things like how the environments are weirdly underlit, or how the sound mixing is so bad that I can barely tell there's music. While the state of the final product here isn't entirely surprising given Final Drive Nitro's small budget and presumably rushed development, it is disappointing nonetheless. Blaster Ball 2, despite being a blatant Arkanoid clone, managed to transcend that status somewhat. Thanks to its modest budget, it's one of the more polished breakout style games I've played. Unfortunately, that same strategy doesn't work nearly as well when you're trying to copy a current AAA blockbuster instead of a 30 year old arcade formula. Final Drive Nitro is, ultimately, a waste of time that's not worth revisiting today. Hey, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, give this video a like and leave a comment letting me know what you thought. I've got some other videos up on screen that you might enjoy as well.